All right, everybody, welcome back to Ultra Chen TV. This is FGC Storytime uh, with uh, myself. I am James Chen, of course, AKA J Chenzor. I'm just talking about a little bit about East Coast versus West Coast rivalry because um, um, tomorrow on ESL, and understand I'm doing this of my own accord, okay? I came up with this idea myself. Uh, ESL didn't talk to me about any of this, but ESL is doing a uh, starring King of the Hill season three starting tomorrow, and it is going to be East Coast versus West Coast. They're flying uh, East Coast players out here to play against the West Coast. So I kind of wanted to talk about um, this East Coast, West Coast rivalry. I just went over the history of Eddie Lee coming to B4 and, uh, and the Bang the Machine Japanese Japan tournament and such, and a lot of that drama that went on. But uh, now let's talk about the year of B5. So um, B5, around this time, uh, this is when uh, MVC2 really started getting to the point. I mean, like, <laughs> the, the early footage uh, of it is, is really funny because actually, you know what? I was going to pull that up. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, no, I remember. I tried to pull it up, but it wasn't a very good copy of it. It would, like, get choppy towards the end and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, this is basically around 2001 now. So this is 2001 around B5 time. So B5 is around 2001. Uh, it was around this time that uh, the, the, the kings of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 were largely considered... Well, the king was largely considered to be uh, Duck Doe, uh, a.k.a. Duck Vader, um, who was super good at the game, pioneered the Spiral team, and uh, really uh, just was one of the best players. Of course, one of the other best players at Marvel vs. Capcom 2 at the time was Alex Vai. Like, a lot of people didn't really, like, nowadays people are probably like, what? Alex plays Marvel? You know, but look, Alex Vai was one of the best players at Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And at every tournament at Southern Hills Golfland, Alex Vai would win first place. He would always win first place at Southern Hills Golfland in MVC2. He was the best at pretty much everything. He was a Tekken national champion at one point in his life. He was pretty much winning everything uh, at the time. But uh, due to reasons, uh, you know, ha having to do with the, with the Japan trip, uh, at one point in time, so Ricky Ortiz went to go represent the United States over there uh, for that Japan tournament, but he ended up moving to New York. So uh, Ricky Ortiz was very not very well known at this time, uh, but Ricky Ortiz ended up moving to New York. And even you know outside of this Japan tournament, I really didn't know much about Ricky Ortiz uh, that much. So um, yeah, it's true. Vi invented Strider Doom. He absolutely did. Um, so what happened then was um, we started hearing about rumors and rumblings about this person on the East Coast who was super good at Marvel vs. Capcom 2 named Justin Wong. People were saying that this kid was even better than Eddie Lee was. They were like, oh my god, this kid, he surpassed Eddie Lee, his teacher. He's the best at this game. He'll be everybody. Um, and, um, <laughs> oh great, Justin and Vi arguing about who invented Strider Doom. Look, the problem is, and this is, this is, this is, this is, um, this is kind of one of the things that, that kind of emphasizes this. They're both probably right. Because if Justin invented Strider Doom on the East Coast and Vi invented Strider Doom on the West Coast, there was no way for us to see this. Like, there was literally no way to see There was no recorded footage. We had no streams. Nobody was recording these small tournaments, weeklies, and sending them anywhere. You just couldn't see. They both literally could have invented it at the exact same time. But, um, uh... Justin Wong at this time was this rumored to be this kid who was super good. And everyone was like, oh, Justin Wong will beat everyone, including Vi, including Duck, including all these people like this. And everybody was like, nah, you're crazy. East Coast free, East Coast free. Because after B4, and Eddie Lee didn't do so well, who he was East Coast best. I mean, by not doing so well, I mean placing like fourth in a completely hostile environment in like three games and winning Marvel vs. Capcom 1. If that's not doing well, 
that's 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 the extent of not doing well right so here we go uh we started hearing rumblings about this justin wong now um before uh b5 happened oh God, that's such a confusing sentence uh prior to b5 happening i believe it yeah it was prior to b5 happening. so this might have been late 2000 or early 2001 i'm not sure but ricky ortiz came over to a southern hills golf land tournament in southern california and was considered the east coast enemy that's right ricky ortiz was an east coast player <laughs> when she came out for this event so at the time uh she had been training mvc2 along with justin wong along with all those other guys and uh when she came to the southern hills golf land tournament uh ricky was considered east coast she was the enemy she was uh the rival and uh she came into this tournament and we were like oh this will be free because she's not even the best right justin's the best whatever we're gonna win this one for free and uh what ended up happening is she came in and sure enough grand finals came down to ricky ortiz versus alex Valle. and uh they played against each other and ricky ortiz won ricky ortiz beat alex Valle in for me one of the most memorable tournaments because everybody on the west coast got hella mad about this event because ricky won it largely because west coast was all rushed down but east coast was very defensive and so what east coast what, what ricky ended up doing was using storm and going lightning attack off the screen and then all you'd hear was Land, super jump, lightning attack, oh, 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 building meter the entire time, and just playing this very defensive style. And people were getting so angry about this. Everyone on the West Coast was like, "What is this lame? Oh my God, you are!" And like, Ricky ended up winning, and Ricky wasn't even the best on the East Coast, and so everyone was like, "What's going on?" And that was when the crack first started forming. That's when the cracks started forming here in this supposed West Coast dominance at this point in time. And um, Ricky ended up winning that. And then what happened was, uh, you know, obviously the rumors of Justin Wong persisted after that. We're like, oh, okay, how is this gonna go? Like, what's gonna happen uh, once we actually get to the actual, like, grand championships? And sure enough, that year we ran B5. So B5 happened and um, grand finals, sure enough, came down to Justin Wong. This is the first time we had ever seen him play and Justin was beating up everybody. He was blowing up everybody and he was doing it with his Storm Sentinel and Cami team, if I'm not mistaken. If you're still in the chat, Justin, please let me know Please let me know. Oh, I did not go to the trifecta. Okay, I guess uh, I missed one event there. But I'm pretty sure Justin was using Storm Sentinel Cami at the time. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, you guys played in ECC6, me versus you versus Rick, in Midwest Championships. It was you versus Valle. That's right. Okay, so uh, Justin beat Valle at the Midwest Championships, kind of adding to that. And then B5, it was actually uh, Duck versus uh, Justin Wong for Grand Finals. It was Mag, Cable, Cami, and Storm Sentinel, Cami. Yeah, at the time, Cami was a godlike assist because while she was uppercutting, she was completely invulnerable. So she was super good for that reason, but uh, eventually kind of got replaced by Commando and, and other stronger teams. And uh, Mech Shen asks, uh, wants to post a link. I found a link to the grand finals of B5 on, on YouTube, but as I was playing through it, it started chopping towards the end and it, it lost all of its quality. So it wasn't very good towards the end. Uh, otherwise, I would want to show that video on there. If you have a, a version of the link that does not have that problem, let me know. Um, but 
uh, Combo Fiend was just starting. Combo Fiend was just starting around this time. Uh, it was really, uh, I feel like, Evo 2002 where Combo Fiend kind of broke through. But Justin Wong uh, did get to Grand Finals with Duck Doe. This was the first time that West Coast Best Duck was going up against Justin Wong, East Coast Best. So uh, everybody was super hype about this match. And everyone, and this again took place in Folsom Arcade. Again, a very West Coast heavy crowd uh, cheering against Justin Wong. But uh, Justin Wong ended up taking grand finals. Like I said, I wish is... Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, Justin. I watched some of that footage and yeah, it's shockingly slow. Like Marvel 2, like back then, looked fast. Now I watch it, it's like, holy crap, this looks really slow. Uh, but yes, if you guys do, you can probably find the footage on Zach D's archive. So go look up uh, Zach D's archive. I'm sure someone could post up a link to the archive here. You should be able to find uh, that Grand Finals match there properly. Uh, maybe even, I wonder if he put it on his YouTube or not. I'm not sure. But in, in, in any case, Justin ended up taking B5. And that was really, in my opinion, kind of the start of when things kind of started shifting. Because the era of Justin Wong, that's basically when the era of Justin Wong started to begin. Because uh, he was able to take B5, and from there, then it was the, God, three years, four years stretch that Justin never lost a Marvel tournament, starting before that, all the way till after that. Like, Justin got first place in every Marvel vs. Capcom 2 footage, um... I mean, sorry, every Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournament ever until Sanford Kelly was finally ever to defeat him. Yeah, and Justin's talking about that. He was 15 years old when he went to California. He was flying on a plane by himself, dude. Like, that's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. So, and, uh, yeah, dude, it was, uh, it was a crazy event, but Justin ended up winning that, and that really started cementing it, and... Then e Evo 2002, Evo 2003, Evo 2004, uh, all these tournaments there, Justin continued his dominance in MVC2, and West Coast kept throwing up all the different challengers against them. It was David Lee, it was Rodolfo, it was all sorts of other players that kept trying to challenge Justin Wong, and Justin Wong would win every single MVC2 tournament. And at the time, MVC2 was kind of the biggest game, so this was a big deal. The other big game was Street Fighter 3, and we all know Justin was probably the best in that game as well because he got, you know, in the, in the Pomona Evo, he got to uh, Loser's Finals against Daigo where the Daigo parry happened, right? So uh, Justin Wong was clearly the best player in, in, the, in, in the nation, and that's kind of when the Alex Vai transition to Justin Wong era happened. So in terms of Street Fighter, in terms of only Street Fighter, uh, that's a key transition in eras, in my opinion. A very, very key uh, transition point from one era to the other where we went from the Alex Vai era to the Justin Wong era. And at this point in time, East Coast was, uh, thanks to Justin Wong, was largely considered where the strongest player was. What's interesting that happened around this time, however, was that... Um, Evo 2000, I'm sorry, B5 was the first time a bunch of Japanese players came over. So if we look at B5 here, uh, we see uh, Super Turbo US uh, pretty much won that one handily. But uh, in Alpha 3, which John Choi and Vi got first and second, uh, Boss got first place and uh, Chikyu got second place. So Japan started dominating at that time. And if I recall correctly, CVS1 was at that event, and that was the, uh, that was the one that GQ won with Raiden, this really terrible character in CVS1, and he won it with Raiden on his team, and he beat Jason Nelson in the grand finals. Uh, a lot of Japanese players did come out for Marvel, yeah, it was like White and Liquid Metal and all these other guys, but they didn't do very well uh, in, 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 uh, in that. Although they had like some crazy, was it Cyclops infinite setup? Or was it, a, was it a, an Iron Man setup? They had like these crazy infinite setups and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> he won with, he basically like, 
Raiden had this move where he would stomp on the floor, like stomp, stomp, stomp. And Jason Nelson was using Guile. And Guile would throw out Crouching Medium Kick because it was a great poke. But Raiden's stomp would actually beat the Crouching Medium Kick. So literally, Chiku walked up to the max range of Crouching Medium Kick and went, stomp, 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 stomp. And I always joked it looked like Raiden was playing DDR because he was just like, stomp, 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 stomp. And Jason Nelson was too scared to throw out a low forward kick. Finally, Jason Nelson says Sonic Boom. He throws out the Sonic Boom, but GQ read that. So he went stomp, 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 roll, Sonic Boom, rolled through the Sonic Boom, 720, and then killed uh, Jason Nelson, which was one of the uh, craziest, <laughs> craziest uh, endings there. And I remember people going nuts, but it was like, dang, Japan beat us with this crappy character, right? And so this is kind of when the Japan era started showing up. And uh, it extended in EVO 2002 when we did the U.S. versus Japan um, 5v5 and Third Strike. There was no official Third Strike tournament. There was only this 5v5, and Japan destroyed us in that event as well. Uh, they just completely dominated us. And so um, around this time, uh, EVO 2002, 2003, of course, 2002 was also the first time Tokido showed up to the... Oh, no, Tokido was at B5. Tokido is at B5. So I always say this. Tokido's been around forever. Okay. He's been coming to these tournaments forever. So he was at B5. He showed up to 2002. He won CVS2 against Nuki in grand finals. And so all these tournaments were being won by the Japanese players. The only tournament that was won by the Americans was Super Turbo, where Jason Cole defeated Nuki in grand finals. So Jason Cole was like the one guy who was able to defend a, a game where the Japanese were a true threat. And um, so around this time, once we got to about EVO 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it really kind of started becoming this U.S. versus Japan thing. There was uh, the East Coast, West Coast rivalry continued to persist, obviously, because it'll never go away. But I, I really didn't feel like it had the same impact in that small little period of time, it didn't quite have the same impact as it did for uh, 2000 and 2001. It was always still there, but it kind of uh, went down just a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, you're looking at my old Tokido pics on my Flickr. Oh yeah, dude, all my Flickr is all there, dude. Uh, I still have all that over there. So yeah, Justin's saying, uh, yeah. <laughs> Justin says, East Coast, West Coast rivalry only existed in Street Fighter because East Coast ran Marvel for free. Look, the five best players, the five gods of Marvel 2, all existed on the East Coast, okay? It was Justin Wong, Sanford Kelly, IFC Yipes, Demon Hyo, and uh, I think at the time it was Smooth Viper, right? It, those were considered the five gods of Marvel 2, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, sure enough... Uh, East Coast ran Marvel, for sure, for sure, East Coast ran Marvel. But, you know, during this little break here, all that stuff was happening, and then, you know, the FGC kind of had the, uh, quote, dark days, you know, the, the, the dark days, but it's really the dark days for Capcom fighters, for Street Fighter, you know, Tekken, Guilty Gear, all those games were still alive and well and everything like that, but just in general, EVO attendance in 2008, I felt like was one of the first times it felt like it went down, in attendance. I don't have any empirical numbers to prove that. That's just a being there judging by the crowd kind of feel. Uh, EVO 2008 still to this day oh, I will always remember as like the saddest EVO. Not because EVO was bad but because it was at this terrible venue. The Tropicana was awful and it just wasn't as packed and I remember I still distinctly remember in 2008 staring at EVO thinking to myself man, this is probably the end of the run. This is probably it. Street fight, fighting game community is probably done. From this point out, it's going to be downhill because we're not getting any new players. Um, oh, yeah, Duck, Duck is considered one of the gods for sure, for sure as well. Yeah, so according to Justin. But, yeah, this is kind of the, 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 the downturn for the FGC. But at 2008, there was a beta arcade cabinet in the little circle in the back for this game called Street Fighter 4. <laughs> oh god, I am a terrible photographer. So Sagatee's making fun of me for my photography. I, I was self-appointed photographer, okay? I just felt like 
someone needs to document this. So I just started filming things on mini DVs and I just started taking pictures of my own accord because nobody else was doing it. So I was like, I'm taking it upon myself to be this photographer. I have no photography background skills. I had a shitty digital camera. My photos are awful. They are terrible. But uh, yeah, so at 2008, there was uh, Street Fighter 4 cabinets in the back. And we had an exhibition playing Street Fighter 4. The game looked cute. It was like, okay, this is, this is kind of interesting. This is kind of interesting. And then um, the game came out and everything changed. The game came out in 2008, toward the last half of the year. And uh, anybody who knows, everything changed. Everything changed. Uh, Street Fighter 4 rekindled. Uh, excitement that had not been felt in a long entire time. Um, the launch party for Street Fighter 4 is still to this day one of the craziest memories I ever had. Because I remember walking over there and seeing this line of people just waiting to get in there just so they can try to play Street Fighter 4 for the first time. It was really, really crazy. So. Uh, yeah, GameStop did that tournament. They did that crazy tournament where everyone went to play Street Fighter 4. But here was the thing. Here was the thing, right? So Street Fighter 4 never came out in the arcades in America. Well, it did later, but at first it did not. The only way to play the game was to get import cabinets. Now at this time, uh, the U.S. managed to get maybe four, five, six spots that had a Street Fighter 4 cabinet. So people were able to play uh, Street Fighter 4 here a lot. They were able to go to Family Fun Arcade and play it. They were able to go to all sorts of different places to play it. In the East Coast, Street Fighter 4 showed up at Chinatown Fair. And that was it. <laughs> that was literally the only place that it showed up at. So when people wanted to play that thing, it was super expensive. Justin just said that there was a dollar a game. And yeah, I was about to mention that. And it was so packed and the lines were so long that they actually put a win streak limit on it. That, uh, that you could put that in the game. It was an option in the game. The win streak limit was, I guess Justin says six. I thought it was seven, but I guess it was six. And literally when you won six games, you got kicked off the machine. It would go gold game over and that's it. The next two guys came up just so people could play because the waits were an hour long, two hours long, just to play Street Fighter 4. So you can imagine the level of practice that the East Coast players got compared to what the West Coast players had was not very equitable, right? There wasn't very equitable at all. So West Coast got to play a lot and then this is where um, yeah, uh, in 2009, yeah, the cabinet was like $5,000 for one, for one cabinet too. And you could not put two joysticks on a Street Fighter 4 cabinet. You had to buy two of them and hook them up through network and play them together. So I think it was like $10,000, right? So here's the thing when, not yet, Justin, not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet. So what happened was that in early 2009, there was a tournament called Sensation. There was a tournament called Sensation. And at the time, two of our best players from the West Coast, a boy named Peter Rosas, AKA Combo Fiend, and, um, oh, dude, every, dude, Gilly bought his own machine and just had it in his house. I went to his place one time and literally was playing an arcade cabinet, Street Fighter 4, in his apartment. It was the most ridiculous thing. I remember trying to learn how to do FADC combos there, too, because I was like, whoa, this is so complicated, and I was trying to learn FADC combos. Any case, um, Peter Combofin Rosas and... A player by the name of Ryan Gutierrez, a.k.a. Gutex, traveled over to the East Coast. I believe that, um, I believe that Mike Ross went there as well. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember now. But they ended up going there playing a tournament. There was also some exhibitions going on over there. And... Um, because the West Coast had a lot of practice. Now, Gutex was a strong player in third strike already. So, um, Gutex was grinding away at that uh, Street Fighter 4. 
And so there was a singles tournament there as well as some exhibition matches over there. Um, the exhibition matches were going to be Marn, who was East Coast, because Marn was living in New York at the time. Uh, Marn versus Gutex. That was going to be a first to seven. And Combo Fiend versus Justin Wong, which was also going to be a first to seven. Those two exhibitions took place. Gutex defeated Marn seven to one. Combo Fiend defeated Justin Wong seven to four. So all of a sudden now, Justin Wong, who's always been the greatest player, lost seven to four to Combo Fiend. And everybody was like, holy crap, holy crap. Yeah, we are, the West Coast is the best. Then the tournament happened. And let me tell you right now, let me read off the top four. Oh, let me read off the top six for Street Fighter Four. Tied in fifth place. Was this a single elimination tournament? They have it listed really strangely. But in a single elimination tournament, uh, wait, you beat? Dude, this record that I have here actually says Combo Fiend 174. Hang on a second, hang on a second, hang on a second. Like literally that's what it says here in this page that I have open. What was the score, Justin? What was the score? What was the score, Justin? What was the score? Uh, come on, come on, come on. Nobody corrected this thread? Nobody corrected this thread at all? So Justin says it was seven for him. So Justin says that he won seven to four over, why is no one correcting this thread? I mean, I can show you right here, dude. I can show you. Let me just show you guys right here what I have, okay? Um, where is this? Dude, here we go. See, it says uh, SF4 results. Marn over Gutex, 7-1. Combo Fiend, Justin Wong, Combo Fiend wins 7-4. That's what I have here in this page. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like trying to be false. I did my research here, okay? I did my research. This is an old post. This is an old post. So, uh, I guess we'll have to, okay. Well, look, Justin is in the chat. He says uh, he won, so I'll have it so that uh, I will have it so that uh, Justin won seven four. Okay, so there we go. Well, in any case, what happened was in the actual tournament. Uh, in the actual tournament here, uh, tied for fifth place was Combo Fiend and Marn. Fourth place was Andre. Uh, we, we remember Andre, right, with his M. Bison. His, he was super, super good. Uh, third place was Justin Wong. Third place was Justin Wong. Oh, here we go. Justin's got the footage. Justin Wong has got the footage. All right. Let's, let's, let's take a look at this here. Uh, Combo Fiend versus Justin Wong. Let's do this, shall we? Justin Wong has the footage here. Justin against Combo Fiend. Sensation. So Justin Wong, of course, going with Rufus. Strange to see Combo Fiend going with uh, Boxer at the time. I thought he was a Viper player, but I guess this was before he actually played Viper. Justin Wong going in. So Justin Wong is giving us visual evidence here of his 7-4 win over Combo Fiend. That's right, Combo was a Balrog and a Dalsum player. That's right. Yeah, West Coast was free the boxer army. But man, you can also see, this is actually interesting footage because you can watch some vanilla Street Fighter 4 and see how the gameplay looked, and how basic it looked. Man. Dude, that was East Coast style, man. That was East Coast style. 
Dude, and the damage in this one was so high. Like, if Combo Fiend ever manages to land headbutt in the Ultra, watch how much damage it does, dude. It's ridiculous. Oh, here we go. Oh, wait, no, he dropped it. Oh, Combo Fiend, the master. Oh, you're dead. Yeah, free. Look at that ultra damage. Look at that ultra damage. Ouch! God, it just, it's just never been like that again. Oh, the pop-off from Justin Wong. Okay, there we go. There we go, the Justin Wong pop-off. Oh, okay, we have an edit. We have edit. And so now Combo Fiend switching to Dalsum, yeah. And yeah, Dalsum, he was pretty much, uh, man, I remember the first time we discovered, like, someone showed me Yoga Sniper. I was like, oh my god, that's so cheap! Oh, chase him down with the EX. That's 100% Marn, dude. That's 100% Marn that I heard that. Yeah, Justin's like, out of here, out of here. Oh, was that Noel? <laughs> That's Noel. <laughs> we in that ass, says Noel. See, even back then, this match kind of sucked for Dalsum. Oh, ooh. no, missed the juggle. <laughs> oh, stream maybe NSFW. Oh, that was sick. Oh, but that only hit once. Because it faded away. Oh, look at this. The anti-air from Combo Fiend. Oh, the mix-ups. The mix-ups. <laughs> oh, man. You know, between watching this and watching the Co-op Cup this past weekend, I miss crowd noise, dude. Crowd noise is the best. Man, Justin, your Rufus looks the same <laughs> after all those years. Oh yeah, that was Noel that time I heard for sure. Oh, the chase down into the super, the pop off. Justin with the pop off. I don't think this is gonna be the whole thing. Yeah, that's it. Those are just those two matches. Okay, so those are just those two matches there. So, I don't know if that actually means anything here. I don't know if we that means anything, to be honest. Justin, you gave us an edited clip here with just showing your two of seven wins. That's all you did, man. That's all you did. So, that's the end of the video. That's the end of the video. Man. I don't, I, I don't know, Justin. I don't know, Justin. I don't know if I can trust you. I don't know if I can trust you. <laughs> No, but look, regardless, regardless, the main thing that I, that I, that I wanted to bring up here is that um, in the singles tournament, uh, for, tied for fifth place was Combo Fiend and Marn. Uh, Andre, a.k.a. Uh, Jago, Twisted Jago, got fourth place. Third place went to Justin Wong. Grand finals was between Gutex and... A guy who went by the nickname of I Love You Joe, <laughs> who is now known as L.I. Joe. And um, the grand fight. So here, let's take a look at some of this other footage, which has not been doctored. Justin Wong. Justin Wong. Uh, let's take a look at some other footage here. This is going to be Gutex versus Justin Wong. In losers bracket, Gutex versus Justin Wong in losers bracket. Now again, keep in mind that Justin, who's using Guile of all characters, uh, they didn't have a lot of access to this game. 
that the West Coast players had. And trust me when I say that Gutex and Combofine and those guys were playing this game a lot. A lot. And yeah, you can tell how early this is that Justin is playing Guile of all characters right now. This, this is an indication of exactly where we're at in, in, in the history of Street Fighter 4 because no one's probably like, wait, Justin used Guile? When did this ever happen? <laughs> but watch the damage, watch the damage! Oh my god, that ultra did so much damage! That was ridiculous! Why was it that much damage? Oh, and there it is, Justin Wong taking that first round. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, Justin had the reputation of being a very defensive player. So Guile is kind of the character that would suit him really well. Oh, the Gutex shimmy! Wow, there's the invention of the term, the shimmy. That is Gutex all day, his favorite thing, the Gutex shimmy, right there. Jump attack, walk backwards, low strong into... Oh, the Gutex shimmy! That's where the shimmy came from. Yeah, that's right, the term shimmy came from Gutex, because that was his thing all the time. He did that all the time. Now, uh, Justin was known for being a defensive player. He, he later ended up, like Justin said, he played, uh, yeah, this is arcade. This is arcade. Uh, he later on switched to Rufus because I guess you said Marn was rushing you down. And uh, one of the things that you wanted to do was also shed your uh, defensive, shed your defensive nature and actually uh, be known more for rushing people down. So Justin switched over to Rufus so he could rush people down, and uh, then Justin became kind of known as a rushdown character, as a rushdown player. So here we go. What are you doing, Gutex, whiffing that from across the screen? Dude, Gutex is playing so late. He's trying to outlane Justin Wong. You can't outlane Justin Wong. Oh, jumping on fireballs. Come on, Gutex. Come on, Gooey. All right, Goo tries to get in there with that. Oh my God, Justin with the Hail Mary flash kick. Wow. Wow. Oops, sorry about that. Stop doing that. <laughs> Justin is like, wow. <laughs> Guile Syndrome. Dude, I know 100% what Justin is talking about because that's what I do with Guile all the time. I just have to flash kick everything. Oh, but look at this. Look how much. He's still on a perfect over Gutex here. Alright, gets a throw. Look at this. Look at this. Justin playing Justin style. Just sitting back there. Oh, I love it. I love it. I miss this, Justin. I saw it again once you started playing Elena, Justin, and, and I and I missed it so much. Oh, the shimmy again! Why does the shimmy work so well? Look at him trying to chase him. No! Oh, wow, he just backed up. Oh, and then we've got the Gutex pop off. We got the Gutex pop off. <laughs> Gutex with the comeback. <laughs> oh, man. Watching some, this is probably, uh, yeah, it says that this was at Sensation in Fairfax, Virginia on February 8th, 2009. February 8th, 2009. Dude, I miss the vanilla announcer so much. I love the vanilla announcer. Wow, Gutex, full screen headbutt. Oh, he's going in for the throws. 
FADCs. Oh man. You know, I know everyone hated Uppercut FADC, but as a Cami player, I sure miss them a whole lot. To the vanilla announcer was so good. The ultimate street fighter! God, I love that quote. <laughs> when am I doing indestructible? Maybe at the end. I don't want to chase the audience away just yet, okay? <laughs> yeah, and sorry, I'm just kind of... Oh, man. Oh, he saves the... He's, oh, he doesn't have the ultra just yet. Gutex using all that meter to get in. Nice throw from Justin. Sorry, I can't help it. Like, I just... I, I just... I just commentate because... That's just what I do, but I, I just want to enjoy this and enjoy the crowd footage as well, the crowd noise as well. Nice, nice neutral jump. Oh, we know how much damage that Balrog can do. Poison. Gotta be careful of that headbutt into Ultra again. Oh, he gets through with the armor, but then the clutch flash kick. Another YOLO. F oh, he had the FADC to save himself. There you go. Nice. Look at this zoning from Justin. You know what's funny about this, though? Is this sensation footage here? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be 100% honest with everybody. This is actually the first time I've ever seen this. I don't think I've ever watched this before. So this is super fascinating to me. Oh my god! Online tactics from Justin Wong! Oh. Man, the YOLO flash kicks, and there it is. Gutex ends up taking that. He would go up into grand finals against... Grand finals, sensation. Against, and these are all recorded, by, of course, by a fee, fee win. Uh, from the East Coast. He was another content uh, person who recorded a lot of videos. Shout outs to Fee. But this is uh, Gutex now versus I Love You Joe, aka this is L.I. Joe. Or L.I. Joe, I should say. So this is Grand Finals here. The Gutex shimmy, it works again. Why? Why is everyone standing up and throw teching? We were not good at crouch techs just yet. Again, this is grand finals between these guys. Hey, hey, camera guy, calm down. Calm down. Cam oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. Crouch tech wasn't invented yet. It's so funny. People didn't crouch tech. It seems like such a, such a, such a intuitive thing. Like, of course you're going to just stay crouching in tech throws, but that just wasn't the way it worked. That just wasn't the way it worked. Sagat with the damage. Look at this pressure! The L.I. Joe pressure! Oh yeah, in the corner it was really risky to get that. Oh my god. Whoa! Gutex dropping combos. Gutex dropping combos. Uh, this might have been the footage in I Got Next, actually. I think it is. I believe it is. Yeah, this is the game that, like, just damage, damage. That, this is the one time me and uh, PR Ron just played vanilla randomly one day, and it was like the... There was so much damage, we were having such a good time with it. Oh, no, Joe, no, you dropped your combo again. Joe, please. Oh my god, really Joe, you're gonna miss a punish like that? Yeah, like, people don't understand what Street Fighter 4 looked like when we first played it. It's so different than how good we've gotten now. So a lot of people are talking, you know, when they say like, Oh yeah, it took us a while to learn Street Fighter 4, blah blah blah. The only reason why we can figure out Street Fighter so fast, Street Fighter 5 so fast, Oh? Oh, dude, look at that. Joe. Joe still as cut as. Oh, but he has hair! Joe has hair! Oh. 
Joe has hair. Joe has hair. <laughs> <laughs> Joe used to be like a hipster from a band. <laughs> uh, did you just say V reversal, V Pateki? There's no V reversal in this game. Oh, don't worry, Cycle Rarity. That is coming up. Trust me. There we go. <laughs> IV reversal, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Gets the uppercut in there. Oh, my God. If he had just delayed that jump attack a little bit, he might have gotten a full ground punish. Nice use of focus attacks. Oh, the shimmy again. Why does that work so well, Gutex? He relied on that so much. Look at that. He went for it again. Like, literally, that was, like, the Gutex thing to do. Why did you just not ultra, Joe? Joe, why did you just not ultra? You're giving Gutex a chance for a comeback. Oh, he had the desperation Gutex throw. And then just do the EX headbutt. Holy crap. Oh, the reason why uh, everyone was able to learn Street Fighter V so fast, someone points out that I didn't finish my comment because I saw Joe with hair. Uh, the reason why is because... The, what we learned in Street Fighter 4 and how we got good at Street Fighter 4 was different than how we've gotten good at any other fighting game before. Every fighting game before this had been about emotions, playing what feels right, understanding all that stuff. But the era of scientist players really started to take over at this time. In fact, I was just talking to Edma about this recently. Edma, uh, who was just visiting recently, I saw him like last week. I was talking to him about this and Edma on the West Coast was one of the first players to start the transition into science players. He was one of the first players who showed up and was like, look, frame data is important. You should be studying frame data if Abel step kicks and dashes at you and you block. He is minus this, so you're just gonna throw because it'll be all of these buttons. And here, this is plus this. Wanna know how to punish that? Check out this kind of stuff like that. So, um, and exactly, uh, Fatal Fail says this, that the knowledge that we gained in Street Fighter 4 back propagated into older games. In fact, uh, Automatic, who's been putting up a lot of good footage, showed frame kill setups in Third Strike to get perfect meaty setups. Like, that stuff didn't happen before. And uh, really, honestly, oh, that's only gonna hit once, yay, and Balrog lives. So really, frame data was never something that we really studied. and. Because Street Fighter 4 went from emotion, the Daigo era, into scientist, the infiltration era, the scientists became the, 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 the strength of fighting games. And what happened at that point in time was that uh, Street Fighter 5, at the start of it, is all science. We're looking for option selects. We're looking for tech. We're looking for that kind of stuff right from the get-go. And so Street Fighter V is one of the most dissected fighting games ever as a result. Oh my god, and he's gonna go into the Ultra, not gonna do too much damage. Wow, you just did empty jump into the... Oh, you stood up and got hit, Joe, no! Ooh, ooh. Oh no! Oh yeah, and there were post-match hits, that's right, and there you go. So Gutex was able to take it over L.I. Joe there in Grand Finals of Sensation. So that tournament happened, and uh, basically once uh, Gutex and Combo Fiend came back to the West Coast, West Coast was feeling themselves, okay? Feeling themselves. 
I mean, this even propagates into the Gutex Mike Watson rivalry story of the you just don't know. And uh, I'll, I'll tell that story some other time. But uh, basically, after this tournament, uh, the West Coast came back and they were feeling themselves. Gutex won that tournament. Uh, everyone who was like, yo, look, West Coast the best, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, like I said, it was kind of an unfair situation because East Coast only had one machine. And uh, East Coast kind of had a, um, a bad situation there. So time went on. And uh, in the West Coast, really, uh, Edma became the shining star of the West Coast. He was pretty much the best player on the West Coast. And Justin Wong uh, started becoming the best player on the East Coast. He started dominating more as more Street Fighter 4 machines started proliferating. As, as he got more practice, Justin Wong started to become really, really dominant. Then uh, EVO 2009 happened and the resurgence of the fighting game community kind of happened at that point in time because we did the get the grand finals of Justin Wong versus Daigo Umahara, which was the sickest thing ever. And I will remind everybody that third place in that tournament was Ed Ma. So Ed Ma, the West Coast best, third place. Justin Wong, East Coast best, second place. Daigo Umahara, Japan's best, first place. So it was a very, very key tournament. And, and, and one of the reasons why it was so big is because it really did show that proper balance. We even also had uh, Eduardo for the first time showing up as VVV Scrub. Sanford Kelly made it there and showed everybody what... Uh, Kami was all about. There was a Japanese player named Dan who did not use Dan, but a Japanese player named Dan made it to top eight there as well. But um, it was really, really, really uh, a great tournament match. But at the time, it was still debated whether or not Ed Ma or Justin Wong was better. So the West Coast definitely still at this point in time held on to the belief that they were better than the East Coast. And um, in fact... Uh, it would come to bite them in the ass. And um, I'm going to take a quick break real quick. I'm going to get myself a drink. I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to talk about um, uh, East Coast dunking the West Coast. So I'll be right back, guys. You do not want to miss that chapter of the story. Be right back. Oh, yeah, yeah. You beat Edma Devastation. I didn't say I didn't say you didn't, but uh, uh, a lot of people I, I, you beat him at Evo as well. But you know, I'm just talking about from the West Coast standpoint. West Coast was still being cocky; they didn't want to accept the fact that you were better at that point in time just yet, Justin. There was still this belief that West Coast was better than East Coast. Uh, still, this false belief of that. So, in any case, okay, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> 